Well, um, eternal conscious torment today, yes, is the majority view. Um, but going back, when you look at early church history, um, again, these are the things most people aren't aware of. So uh, when you tell people that, well, hey, for like the first 400 years of church history, the dominant view in the church was universal reconciliation, that's a big shock for most Christians. Like, what? You know, because we just assume because everyone we know believes eternal conscious torment, that that's always been the dominant Christian view. The quote unquote Christian view is, you know, eternal torment. So to, to find out that, wow, um, the early church for about 400 years embraced universal reconciliation. Like, like wow, that's a big shock. Um, and so I think that there's also just some misunderstandings about what universal reconciliation is also. Because typically when you, when you mention the concept to someone who's never heard the view before, they assume that what universal reconciliation means is that, well, everyone dies, no matter, you know, Christian, non-Christian, good, bad, um, and just ding, ali, ali, oxen free. They just, hey, you know, come on into heaven, you know, grab some snacks in the back, have a great time. Um, that no, that's not what the view teaches. And in fact, the, like the shocking thing is to say, well, if you were to really understand what the early Christians believed uh, when it came to universal reconciliation, the belief was not that people escaped sort of the flames or the fire uh, of, of hell, quote unquote hell, but that everybody passed through the fire. So universal reconciliation actually t taught that everyone passes through the fire when they die. The difference is that um, whereas all three views have sort of this metaphor of fire uh, that people uh, would endure, uh, the difference is the nature of the fire. And so, you know, in annihilation, the purpose and nature of the fire is destruction. And uh, eternal torment, the, the purpose of the fire is just endless torture. And universal reconciliation, the purpose of that fire is re to refine and purify, uh, you know, what's called like the fuller's soap, the refiner's fire, that burns away everything in us that isn't of Christ and reveals, you know, what Paul talks about, the gold and silver and precious stones, um, revealing Christ in us. And so I think with that understanding, I mean, most people, again, have never heard that perspective and don't realize that universal reconciliation actually teaches that everyone will, you know, post-mortem endure some sort of a refining process. And, uh, you know, we use the metaphor of fire, but I don't think it's a literal flame, right? It's just a, it's a metaphor for the process of uh, what, what it says in Hebrews, this idea that uh, uh, the purpose of that uh, process of discipline with the Lord's discipline is always to restore us, uh, to make us more into the image of Christ. And, um, and so I think that's helpful, I think, for people to understand. It's not a get out of jail free card or get out of hell free card. Um, there is a purpose to that and that the purpose is something that ultimately is to reveal Christ in all of us.